All right, so this is part three. Welcome back. This is the final part of this series. And uh, you can see that after all the pieces were cut and laid in there dry, um, got things clamped down and I'm tacking things into place right here. And that's all I'm doing right now is just tacking and holding everything in place. So you can see that I've got to, this is the tube, the frame is one inch square tube. This is five eight square tube on the inside. And you can see that I've, I'm holding that flat to the back side right there. That's gonna be so when the screen goes on the back uh, that it'll be flush to the frame. And then um, the little recessed area in the front uh, gives it a really nice defi definition. It's, uh, it's gonna be a good look, I think, when it's all done. You know, I did pretty good with uh, these cuts. I, I know I was, I was showing you I used them as a, used one as a template uh, for all the remaining other pieces, or a lot of them. And they were close, they weren't exactly, but uh, some of them were off uh, 16th or an eighth. That's something you really can't see with the, uh, uh, unless you're looking for it. Overall, it, it turned out pretty good. All right, once everything is tacked, it's just a matter of going in and I'm gonna go ahead and just weld these on the front side and the back side. And I'm not going all the way around with this. Uh, and once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grind those welds down. Uh, front and back just uh, flush to the surface right there clean things up a little bit all right so like i say we're operating off the hp pro pulse 220 mts here uh, my settings for this project is thin material it's right about 200 inches a minute about 17 volts i'm using 35 thousandths wire and the gas that i use is 90 10 90 percent argon 10 percent co2 there's a lot of different gases out there. Um, I, I hear there's a 98.2 and of course the 75.25 is pretty standard. Uh, I've never tried the 98.2, but uh, people seem to like that. I'm just old school or not old school. This is, I've been using 90.10 for a long time and, and I'm pretty happy with it. It, uh, it. it burns pretty clean and doesn't have a lot of spatter. All right, so just clamping it down and then uh, laying the pieces here on the side panel. And uh, you can see they, they fit in there pretty good. They line up pretty close, not exactly, but uh, pretty close. And just repeating this process, just tacking and, and uh, getting ready to weld this on the front and the back. All right, so there it is. It's finally taken its final shape. And uh, I'd lost some footage uh, somewhere along the line right here of me welding the backside and actually grinding the wells down. You can see that's now complete. Um, and now it's time to put the screen on. Don't, don't know what happened there, but uh, that's what I did. Probably a good thing anyway. It's all a lot of the same stuff. All right, so this screen is, uh, I wanna say it's 18 gauge, uh, half inch expanded bendel. Now this is a little bit, heavier than what I was really looking for, but this is all my metal supply store had, uh, the smallest and the lightest weight anyway. I was looking for something a little bit more uh, thinner, uh, a little bit more transparent, if you will, when you're looking through the fireplace, but that's okay. It's, this is uh, what they had and it's gonna work fine. You know, there's all kinds of different ways of cutting this stuff. Um, I like to use the uh, cutoff wheel. This is a uh, uh, Black Lightning or Mercer. Got several different types of these, and uh, I think this is a good way of cutting this stuff. It's pretty thin. You know, I don't have a shear. Shear would be great, but uh, this is a pretty good alternative. All right, so I'm just going to lay the screen in here, and uh, I'm just going to start tacking it in now. 
I'm clamping it down to get it as flat as I can and you can see right at the 90 degree I don't have any backing strip right there for both sides of that so I've slightly overlapped this about just a quarter of an inch and I'm just gonna bump tack this every couple inches right in there and I didn't want to put any kind of backing in there I thought it would look kind of weird coming together at that 90 degree so I elected just to uh, to just overlap it right there and for the rest of it, about every three or four inches on center. And uh, it's a great idea to use your hand to hold down uh, any of this expanded metal that might be um, raising or lifting up as you're going along. You know, I learned the hard way, previous projects, um, just laying it in there and, and welding and then having it bowed up in certain areas. So you can see I... In a couple of areas, you'll see where I'm using my hand to uh, to hold down that metal where it may have uh, rise, uh, risen up a little bit prior to welding. Now right in here, you can see it started to lift up. Just hold everything down nice and flat. And of course, this is the back side, so all these tacks you're not gonna see because I've got them right in the center of the tubing. And this will be the, the side that's facing the the actual fireplace so you won't be able to see all those tacks. All right, and then this is the side piece. Again, I'm just buttoning it up in there tight and I'm just gonna get a couple of uh, tacks right in the very corner right there uh, on each piece and that should be enough to hold that down. Every couple inches on the outside there and about every three or four to the inside. All right, so there it is complete. That's the final uh, final product outside of paint. And I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. All right, there it is. Got a uh, nice coat of black paint on this fireplace screen. And I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna say, paint, why paint? It's a fireplace screen, it's gonna get a lot of heat. There's a lot of heat coming off there. You gotta remember, this is Southern California and there's never a day here that's below 40 degrees ever, even in the winter. Uh, the logs in the fireplace are artificial logs and it's, uh, uh, it's um, got natural gas to it. We never use it. The idea is to keep my uh, one-year-old grandson fingers out of the glass that's in the fireplace. But for those of you that are wondering, I still use heat resistant paint, 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. So anyways, there it is. Let's get this thing installed. All right, so there it is before. You can see the broken glass in the base there, and there's the after installation. Overall, it's a great project. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this series. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Instagram and check us out on Facebook. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.